Hi, John here, sitting by Cameron Lake in beautiful and wild Waterton National Park. It's a beautiful, hot summer day. Temperature is hovering around 30 degrees. Warm enough that uh, even some of the kids are trying to uh, swim in, in uh, Cameron Lake, which is a very, very cold lake to swim in. The words come to you, though, from home, because the original sound quality of the video made it too hard to hear what I was trying to say. So it's me by the lake with my words re-recorded at home. Earlier, I had made some videos related to my religious beliefs and philosophy during my childhood teens and early 20s. Briefly, it was a mix of atheism, New Age paganism, drinking, and sex, with a small uh, but brief sort of interest in Christianity. Today, I want to very briefly look at what has been my major religious beliefs and philosophy that have informed me for most of my thinking, informed, sorry, informed my thinking for most of my adult life. At varying times over the past 40 or so years, the question of God was for me a closed question. There was no God. I was an atheist. Not one of the more recently minted in your face atheists who feel compelled to attack anyone with any kind of religious beliefs. I generally minded my own business. I didn't spend too much time arguing people of faith unless they decided they had to push it into my face, in which case I gave them a pretty good thrashing, intellectually speaking, of course. Most of the time, my atheism was a hyphenated variety of atheism. I was an agnostic atheist. I admit it, I didn't know if there was or was not a God, and I was pretty darn sure that no one else did either. It seemed to me that there was just as much reason to believe in some kind of God as there was against such belief. So, I thought best not to make up my mind too soon. <clears throat> I was, I was, no not was, I am married to a Christian lady, and I felt that at least some of her ideas about God might also be correct. But I wasn't really agnostic about most of the mainline Christian teachings, or their Bible in particular. I thought it was mostly weird and really, really way out there. I wasn't about to buy into a book with talking snakes, with a couple of young kids screwing up and thereby somehow upsetting the whole cosmic show. The idea of God having to sacrifice himself to himself in order to be like us seemed beyond belief. How could God allow himself to get so worked up over a young couple screwing up, as if this is a new thing in the world? Nope, I was agnostic about the notion of God or no God, but for most of my adult life, large parts of the Christian religion was utterly incomprehensible to me. The nice thing about being agnostic is that it gives one permission to continue searching for the true meaning of life, to search for God or evidence for the non-existence of God, even to learn, in my case, as much about Jesus as I could. I felt drawn towards him, even though most of what I thought of Christianity seemed like one giant gonzo horror story, especially most of the people that I met that were pushing Christianity towards me. So mostly, with many questions, I found myself drifting towards a, a kind of religionless, religious philosophy with a proud heritage, perhaps the mother of all religions, deism. Even before I'd heard of the name deism, I'd pretty much settled into a version of it. I was, and have been for many, many years, even decades, what I've come to call my, uh, what I've come to call an agnostic pan and deist. The agnostic part, of course, meaning I didn't know for sure if there was a deity, but I'd come to think it was very likely that there is a deity. Pan and deism or deity meant that I th meant that I think the deity God is both near, as in dwelling in us, and dwelling in or having being outside of our space-time continuum. I think of agnostic panentheism as more of a religious philosophy, a way of thinking about God, than a religion. 
I'll give now, in the briefest possible way, an account of what has been the guiding religious philosophy for most of my mature life. The universe has a first cause, which I and others call Creator. The Creator is the author of the fundamental laws and creative processes of the universe. The Creator is both transcendent and immanent. The Creator experiences everything we experience. The Creator dwells in us, and we dwell in the Creator. The Creator does not intervene in the orderly function of the universe. The Creator endowed us with the powers of reason and expects us to use it. The Creator endowed us with a moral conscience that is best summed up in the Golden Rule. Don't harm anyone. Try to be nice to each other. The Creator is an artist who obviously delights in awesome, fearsome, diverse displays of color, shape, form, energies, mysteries, as revealed by reason and observation of the universe. The Creator delights in diverse human stories and human cultures and human religions, as experience, reason, and observation reveal in the human story on this planet. Some additional ideas or attitudes that went hand in hand with my agnostic panideism are I generally use I generally use the female pronoun like she and her rather than he and him when speaking of the creator in personal terms, which I don't often do by the way. In part I use these female pronouns because it really makes no difference what pronouns we choose, and in part because it really offended a gang of Christian fundies I happened to be arguing with at that time, who just absolutely couldn't stand the thought that God might be a woman. For them, God had to be a man, because they were men, and this is the way God had to be. I also generally thought that if there is a life after death, that we may face some kind of karmic-like judgment based on what we did and did not do with our finite life energy. It never made any sense to me that a god could care less what I believed or did not believe. I rejected any notions of heaven, too bloody boring, and hell, too human a punishment, and really just simply too unworthy of any god I wanted to worship. The only thing that made much sense to me was some form of reincarnation that moved us onward and toward the One, or Source, or Creator, or even that when we die, we simply die. But no eternal flames or eternal church in heaven for me. At the time, anyway. I saw little or no use in petitionary prayer. I assumed the deity had left us alone to create a better or worse world, and that if we screwed up, we had only ourselves to blame. I saw some value in meditative prayer, reflecting on the awesome creation, and the intelligent creative force that caused all this to be, but I didn't for one minute think the creator needed me to praise him or pray to him. There was no devil in my deism, no original sin, Excuse me. No God demanding blood sacrifices, no holy books, no popes, no preachers, no formal religious service of any kind. I liked that deism didn't pick fights with science, fights they could never win, fights that the religionists lose over and over again. I had no quarrels at all with science, and always felt very attracted to the sciences. It will always be one of the regrets of my life that I did not pursue a career in science. I liked that no one could tell me, you must believe that, or this, or not be a deist. I liked that I never had to force my reason to accept woo-woo bullshit because some guru or pope or preacher somewhere said I must believe or be tortured by a so-called loving God for my own good. For a very big portion of my adult life, decades really, 
I was a happy and contented Pan and Deist, and saw no reason at all to change. It met all my spiritual needs and satisfied my intellect and reason and personal experiences. Except for the question of Jesus and what he had to say and what his life and death meant to the world and more importantly to me. Thanks for watching. In my next video I will talk more about Jesus, the Christian way, and its relationship, if any, with my agnostic pan and deism. See ya. John.